Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate, where your panelists discuss thought-provoking topics in a no-holds-barred manner. In other words, we call a spade a spade. I'm advocating for the need for an electoral college in Nigeria. Late American politician Edward Kennedy once said, the Constitution does not just protect those whose views we share, it also protects those with whose views we disagree. Today, Joyce is continuing from where she stopped last week as she continues on this matter of constitution. It is important we speak for a new and better constitution. And finally, Coyote is asking how we decide who the victim is in various situations. Stay with us. The need for electoral college in Nigeria. At Independence, Nigeria held great optimism. Political commentaries across the globe testified to inevitable emergence of a strong nation to lead Africa out of the dungeon occasioned by colonialism. It was an easy prediction. All indicators of a prosperous nation were available. The natural resources, the human resources, the capital resources were not lacking. We could not boast of an array of ideological political leaders across board. However, 60 years after independence, it will seem that the predictions were wrong. The country had a fruitful first republic and has ceased to progress. It has become saddled with the constant threat of insecurity, a, we a weakened security system. Worse, it became the poverty capital of the world. It is obvious that Nigeria has a leadership crisis inherent in her political system. The role of leadership cannot be overemphasized. It's leadership that directs, initiates, and combines other resources into meaningful development. The absence of it, as it is in Nigeria, is a state of continuous underdevelopment. Therefore, it becomes a necessity for a new ideology to educate, enlighten, and encourage political participation. The Electoral College Nigeria fills the void and the need with its mandate to usher in a new Nigeria. The Electoral College Nigeria is a civil service organization that was set up by individuals versed in practical politics and governance. The Electoral College Nigeria is non-partisan, non-governmental, and is an initiative of the Emerging Leaders Advancement Forum that's a brainchild of young Nigerians who span from politics, patriotism, development prof professionals, to everyday Nigerians born void of Ideolo an ideological democracy in Nigeria. The college's objectives, to improve policy within the electorate by providing civic education to the electorate, provide training for party delegates and aspiring candidates, to champion the cause for electoral reforms and constitutional amendments. In less than a year, the college has been part of student leadership summits in universities across Nigeria. It has also promoted actual electoral etiquette and processes in, election, in the election school of leadership in primary schools and secondary schools across Nigeria. Under the stewardship of its executive director, the college has continued to educate Nigerians during the COVID-19 pandemic, launching its online virtual class on politicity and governments for aspiring candidates and the electorate. The executive director has reiterated on many occasions that Nigerians with its high level of intellect are poor in political literacy. He stated that the key to this is understanding political offices, functions, jurisdictions as provided by the constitution. 
The college also understands that the quality of debates for political office don't necessarily show the electorate the jurisdiction of the office sought. It's noted this is a key tool to candidate selection and also the college held the Lagos East by-election senatorial debate in which candidates were asked questions within jurisdiction of office, helping the electorate make informed decisions and choices. Understanding the ongoings of the political terrain in Nigeria, what's most key is political literacy for the electorate to select individuals appropriate for office, to also help delegates with candidate selections and candidates in political office to understand jurisdictions of the office they serve in. Hence, the advocacy and work with the Electoral College Nigeria. So my question is, how do we all get involved in the Electoral College? I need to be a student there because yeah, everything you question. just said, I need to learn. Yeah, there's so much to learn, particularly looking at the line of what you really stand for and what you want to, what you want to achieve as, a, as an Electoral College. Where do we start from? Who has the right to be a member? No, it's actually a college is built for everybody in Nigeria. We, we, we organize, of course, virtual and physical classes so anybody can sign up. We just finished our fourth uh, cohort and looking at it, we, of course, we expect to educate every Nigerian. But that's a big task. So we've reduced the task to about 1 million Nigerians for 2023. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. We hope that works because we need the information. Mm. It's not in the mainstream education curriculum anyway, so yeah, it, we might as well. I, I think growing up, there was this course we did, or this subject we did in prime, secondary school, which is called government. At a point, it was taken out of the syllabus. Really? Yeah, at a point. Now, what that did for us then was that it gave you a lot of history about what happens. Mm -hmm how, what you're learning, the, where you're coming from as a people. And that also lets you know the rights and the strength you have as a voter. Mm -hmm. Right now, the reason I really buy into the Electoral College stuff, not just like the American one, but the reason I buy into it for Nigeria is that I believe that a lot of people need to be sensitized. We need orientation and reorientation. Re a lot of people that understood how the system worked back then, they've forgotten how it works. Yes. A lot of people have forgotten what it even means to vote how to vote. A lot of people don't even know how to vet their, their candidates. And most importantly, what, one thing I wish this electoral college could do is to say, we focus too much on the presidency. The focus is not the president. It's the senators, the parliamentarians, the state government, the local government chairman. I'm sure all, the, all, all of that is there. No, right? you know, like we, we run it, we run it. There are 22 modules in, in the course known okay. as Politracy 101. So there are 22 modules. It takes you, it walks through the local governments, the, the legislative houses, okay. you know, down to uh, the local government. It also goes to post elections, which is result collation and other points, you know, okay. issues with, issues with um, judicial uh, mishaps when it comes yeah. to debating mm -hmm. points. And when we go all, all through the entire system mm. of politics and governance, as uh, you know, we, we might not have good examples in Nigeria, but of course we try to create out of what which exists. So we, have, yeah. so we teach what already is, what what already what should be, which is by the constitution. Then we will tell you what is, and we'll tell you what the problem in between the two are, mm. and that's how we mm -hmm. so that we leave you with a clear picture of how it should be. Mm -hmm. We go as far as even teaching our students manifestos and campaign messaging. Now, this is not for them to run for office. If you choose to run for office, beautiful. Well and good. But so that the electorate should understand what to expect. So when a legislator comes to you and says, I'm going to give you light, I'm going to give you road, you already know it's not possible. Beyond it's not within purview. jurisdiction. Yes. It's not within oh, jurisdiction. Her purview. Her purview. Well, yeah, her purview. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know, we have to be delicate. With we, you know, this. he's okay. her purview. He's her, her purview. So it's not within his or her purview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also get to the point that we try to make clear that governance, there's something we preach the most. Which is? Governance does not have any gender. Meaning, there's no position that a man or woman cannot achieve. Governance mm. is governance, is deliverables. It's not based. And we, we also do something funny within our class system, which I know she would love. Where? It's where we, we do not take in a class if we do not have at least 49% female participation. Yay! 
Okay. It's something we don't do. Okay. I will tell you, we've, we've pulled that right. Uh, no, you we've know. pulled we pulled that across well time. And I would say also even within the structure of the Electoral College Nigeria, we have volunteers across the structure. I will tell you, women make up at least 73% of its position, our positions. Mm -hmm. uh, we even don't, I remember a, a funny thing that happened. We were to hold a meeting to prepare for the fourth cohort on Val's Day, and the women were like, no, they can't attend. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> human face. <laughs> so, so we try to work within that, and we also understand that in Africa, if you bring the women into into political participation, you're not only bringing a woman in; you're bringing another generation in. Yes. Mm. We have understood that within the uh, yeah, we've we've understood that within the electoral college, and we've we've seen the rise of women that you know have been our students. The we we have even our KPIs are massive. Like um, we have a, a situation of I think within the second cohort, and someone decided he 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 was going to run for office, but this time within a professional capacity. And I remember it was Asaba, and it was the MBA chairman of Asaba, and they've never had somebody under fifty, and this guy was under forty, and you know. We, we, we taught him some things, funny theories. We have a minority X theory, which means you can go against the system and probably win. It's how you go about it. And he used that, and he wrote a review for the college. So it's good to see that the chairman of MB Asaba is, is a student. And you know, this is not only for political oh, positions, oh. as we term it. Mm. Even professional, even professional, professional positions, yeah. running your associations, mm -hmm. we've also been able to affect people's directions. Mm. And all if that. we provide our own power and our... Water. water and every other amenity. We might as well provide our own education. They are private schools, so this is exactly. just one specialist school mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. need. Yeah. And I wish it could be mainstream. Maybe we'll get there. If, if like I, you said, you've partnered with. Uh, yeah, we're partnering. Yeah, we par we partner with multiple institutions mm -hmm. and trying to deliver this. Um, we've we've gone as far as um, even initiating partnership with the Cardinal Business School, where mm -hmm. we're trying to bring governance into every faucet. <clears throat> excuse me, of um, life in Nigeria. So we've also tried with um, international partners, of course, we have a few, and we're expanding at, at, at the rate we can. We yeah, don't have any yeah. grants yet, so we're, fun okay. we're funded internally, but all, all right. you know, when they say who is bankrolling you, yeah. it's just a lot of people that really, really love the believe country the system, and yeah. believe in the system. And mm -hmm. we've, we've tried to open up partnerships and we'll keep yeah. trying to. I do. think likely when, when you said uh, you you opened up a partnership from the outside. My major concern was, which is one of the challenges we've had with politics in our part of the world, is that we, we often import strange methodologies and approaches from the outside. Oh. But I, I mean, you know, because let's take for example, you know, if I'm suffering from, if I have a typhoid and you have a malaria and I attempt to use your cure for typhoid, I will only aggravate my issues because I wouldn't get healed. And that's what we do at a lot of times. The West is far ahead. There are so many things, they have a structure. We don't have a structure. So if we try to directly import whatever is done abroad into a system, it might not work because we don't have a structure that will support it. Mm. So most of the things we should do is what you're doing now, which is whatever you're doing now is geared at building a structure. Homegrown. Yeah, homegrown. Letting people identify what they need. Because if, for example, now, they, I mean, you're starting this abroad and you're telling them, okay, this is where you need to vote. Hey, I know how to vote. I know the structure. I know what to do. Mm. But most importantly is that what you said about you not just being political office holders but even professionals because if you can groom people to be thinkers individually it's easier to migrate into politics mm -hmm. as against just grooming them for politics they haven't applied all the theories they've learned at all but if you're a secondary school a university student and you venture into a post in your school or something and from there you grow and you see how the system works you can grow to become a better politician because politicians are like doctors you don't become a doctor when you get into the hospital you become a doctor then you're admitted into the hospital I can't just walk into the hospital and say, okay, I want to, I, have a, I aspire to be a doctor and I want to start, you know, then, okay, now I'll call you doctor and I start the process. No, you go to school, you graduate, you have the degree and you're called a doctor, then an hosp a hospital takes you over. And I think that's the way politics is. Your mind or must be, be. should be, yeah, okay. in a for our, for our state. Your mind must be prepared such that when you're going in there, you're going in there with the idea of deliverables, what to do for the people, what you want to achieve. 
I mean, just working immediately. As against getting there, they say, okay, how does the system work? And I tell your oh, guy, you need to do this. And you say, okay, let's do that. And the system gets messed up. Oh, madam, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm your guy, madam. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, um, the Electoral College, you know, we are non-partisan. We've also trained within um, intra-party, on an intra-party okay. basis. So we work with whether it's APC, PDP, mm. STP. And we understand the truth about things. And that is because we clearly understand that no party is bad. It's the players True. within a party that is bad. True. Like I always give an example, and I'm sorry I'm going to say this on air, but because it's going to be painful and a lot of people are going to laugh. But I'm an Arsenal fan, but that does not mean I hate football. Why are you guys laughing? You see what I said? No. You guys, <laughs> I just so I'm an, Arsenal, to you. <laughs> I'm an Arsenal fan. I'm an Arsenal fan. Mm. And no matter how many times Arsenal loses, <laughs> it's sad to say, <laughs> loses some games, um, I still don't hate football. But mm. what we've done with politics is that, or in Nigeria, is that we've cho we, we hate politics because That's of the it. players. And That's you it. can't hate politics because of the players. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it a bad game. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you bring in new players, that's which is what we are trying to do. Or you try to improve the game within the system. Yeah. Like, um, we, I've forgotten we, which party we were training. And there was, uh, we, we were going over the delegates. And delegates were saying they didn't know they were not supposed to collect money. I don't want to mention the party. No, it's all right. We they, didn't, they didn't know they were not they supposed didn't know. to. They didn't Awareness, know. Awareness, education, That's a, teaching. So this is the gap that the Electoral College Mr. is trying bridge. to bridge. Okay. Joyce is next after this break. Don't go anywhere. Still on the Constitution matter, why do we advocate for the total scrap of our present 1999 Constitution? The Constitution does not provide for acceptable fiscal federalism, which means that states cannot generate sufficient revenue on their own because all minerals, mineral resources are vested in the exclusive control of the federal government. States do not need to depend on or be controlled by the federal government. Besides Lagos, Rivers and one or two other states in Nigeria, most states depend on the Federation accounts for as much as 80% of their revenue. So in what way will such a constitution promote autonomy and intentionality with resources, areas for revenue generation and sustainability internally? In one breath, the constitution gives the state government control over local governments. But in another breath, it makes local councils subordinate to the federal government. Thus, while the state government can create local governments and determine their structure, their powers, and their functions, it is the responsibility of the National Assembly to incorporate any newly created local government into the Constitution by way of constitutional amendment, which is quite cumbersome and in most cases unrealistic. I feel this process can be usurped by powers that be for undue dominance and ultimately control. The Constitution, in furtherance of its centralizing tendencies, has no place for state or local police, whereas security is better handled at the local level. The issue of banditry, kidnapping, and the general insecurity is local and is therefore better handled locally. However, there is no provision in the Constitution that allows government as chief security officers of their respective states to create and manage security outfits in their states because by constitution there can only be one police force for the entire federation and all individuals and persons of the police are prohibited from creating any other police force or security outfit to coexist with the current police force. State autonomy and policing is a huge plus on peace and development. The Constitution also fails to state the specific functions of state and local governments. But it takes time to elaborate the powers and functions of the federal government. This tends to subordinate the state's government to the central government and puts the federal status of the 1999 Constitution at a debate. How will the local governments and states function in their fullness when the Constitution is not clear as to what exactly their powers and functions are? For us to have a brand new constitution, there are some steps to follow. Number one will be the referendum, where representatives at the legislature should be tasked 
with meeting their constituents and detailing every desire of these constituents for what the constitution should look like. These meetings can span months. All points must be properly documented in the most transparent and painstaking manner possible. Then there is a constitutional convention where the same representatives from the National Assembly and other stakeholders will publicly meet and debate on what should be contained in the Constitution and what shouldn't. Every representative must be allowed free speech, just like the Constitutional Convention assembled in Philadelphia in May 1787. Then there will be the documentation process. After debates have been properly weighed and analysis derived, decisions should be put in writing by a committee and then compressed. All parties will then sign an agreement if and when the document satisfies the needs of their constituents. Finally, there will be approval and implementation by the president. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, three things stood out for me there that I would really like to look at. Number one is the issue of the exclusive and the concurrent lists which limits the powers the, the state government have to you know, explore and all that stuff. Number two is policing. And number three is the power of the local government and the state government. Now, regarding the, regarding the exclusive list, I'd like to address that by quoting the, the biblical verse that we all know, okay. the uh, parable of the, the talents, okay. where the man gave some out and one kept it. I know at a point he said that you were not faithful in little. And he took it from the guy that had one and, and gave it to the guy that had ten. That's what's happening in Nigeria now. Yes, we know that there are limitations to the ability of states to explore their natural resources. But when Nigeria had its boom, I mean, the success of Nigerian states or Nigeria as a state mm -hmm. did not come from the, all these so-called natural resources. It came from agriculture. In the north, they were exporting highs and skin, or what's it called? Mm -hmm. in, the, in the west, cocoa. In the east, palm oil and all those other things. The state's government still have control over all these resources. Mm -hmm. What have they done with it? Nothing. Rather, they sit down in their states and go cup in hand to the federal government and lament and get every citizen worked up, demanding for things to be migrated from the exclusive to the concurrent. Now, I'm not saying that is wrong. No, we need it. Mm -hmm. The states need to have control. But I'm saying, even what you have control over right now, what why are wouldn't, what it? are you doing with it? Why wouldn't a boy say, or let's say some states in the north say, okay, I grow pepper, I grow this, I grow that. Lagos, you are a consumption state. Now, let's come to the government of Lagos, because yes, we have Ministry of Greek in Lagos, mm -hmm. but we can't have time to grow anything. I'm sorry. Why won't you look for collaboration like it happened on Amber Day and we had the, is it Kebby Rice? Kebby Rice, yeah. If we do more of that, our states will grow. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time for states like Lagos to also say, okay, I, there are too many people in Lagos. I'm taking my money, partnering with Anambra or Eboin or Imo State. I'm coming to set up a palm oil plantation. Just do that. 30% or 50% of it comes to Lagos. Mm -hmm. The remaining we export. Mm -hmm. We're creating jobs for the people there to stay there. Do the same thing in the north with rice. Do the same thing in the southwest. And you will reduce the pressure on Lagos. That is the problem of Lagos. Now, when it comes to policing, it's another fairy tale that, yes, we need. Again, it's good to have police in your states mm -hmm. that you can relate with. But, but to say everything goes back to the IGP for approval is not true. And I'll give you a very simple example. Um, Governor Wiki, mm. yes, Wiki, and uh, his arc uh, rival, yeah, uh, what is his name, the <laughs> former Rosemary governor, Rosemary Amici. Rosemary Amici was on, his, was on a visit to River State, mm. blaring his convoy. Mm -hmm. He's a federal minister, mm -hmm. has that federal capacity. Mm -hmm. Governor Wiki was also coming, blaring his, in his convoy. A state, ordinary state governor that doesn't have control over the state police. Supposedly. Ah, that, that, you know, I'm using what everybody says. doesn't have. They meet. And because it's the governor of the states, the policemen that were with the federal minister had to calm down for him. Mm. Again, when the federal government sent DSS to arrest a, a, a judge in his states, it wasn't in the state house. It was in the house of the judge. He went there and 
told them they don't have no, the capacity. Jesus, not, and they pulled out. You know, you know, I, I, I need to add this part here. Okay. Governors become selective with when they are chief Thank security you. officers. That is what That's Nigerians the have never. And, and let me bring out another case. If you remember the case of um, uh, this uh, Imo state, yeah, where the president governor is turning on uh, Roti. Roti when Roti? when they want to, they can activate, they can activate state apparatus, exactly. especially so where we're especially for it to be during especially mm -hmm. during elections. Exactly. State governors control everything. everything, even the way state electoral commissions vote and Every how the voters then selectively when there's banditry, they are not in control. They're not in control. <laughs> Really? It, and, and, and I tell people, that, okay, if there's any armed robbery case now, like for example, what happened in, um, uh, um, uh, what's this place, Quara State, uh, Offer. Yes. Okay. I doubt the governor needed to call the IGP to release his boys. You know, you, know, the, the, you see, the breakdown of the police systems, but the police structure in Nigeria is such that, you know, you have the state's commander, you have the, um, is it regional or local government kind of commander? Then even within local government, you have subunits. That's why you have the subdivision, et cetera. Now, if things are happening, for example, let's say in this coastal affair area, and there's crisis, the commander in charge of this division doesn't need to call the state commander to take for charge. approval. It takes charge. The one in the local government doesn't need to call this divisional commander before it takes charge. So if there's anything happening, what I believe is a problem with policing in Nigeria, which is something we really need to address, yes, what? is that, number one, the people are under-equipped. Given. The emoluments do not exist. I wouldn't go kill myself. All the policemen that have been killed on the street, what has happened to their family? And we're humans. If my fellow policeman goes on, on mission, dies in Nigeria, and you say, sorry, and all you get is a letter to the family. Why would I die for a country? However, two days ago, a few days ago, there was this thing about Nigeria sending 144 policemen to Somalia. Mm -hmm. it's, as a, it's, a, a, um, it's an international mission. They are catered for. They are paid well. Policemen will kill to go there. And when they get there, that is when you know Nigerian policemen are professionals. Now, let me ask because they'll show up. I'll they'll show up. I, I need to add a point before I now go over the same you know, the whole thing <laughs> my own, with my own version of version, how yeah, yeah. Um, You have less than 500,000 policemen policing 200 million people. <laughs> and half of them are with VIPs or vital assets, meaning yes. banks, CBN, yeah, ETC. No. So we approximately have 210,000 policemen policing 200 million people. <laughs> what are you asking Who does for? that? <laughs> what are they, so this is not even a problem. Now, states, they make me laugh. You're talking about removing this from concurrent list to exclusive list. Now I'm going to, number one, states kidnap the entire local government, which is this problem with, with democracy in Nigeria. Nigeria yes. So you can't ask for more control of resources when you are even kidnapping the resource of the local governments under you. Now, federal government pays directly to local governments. States have ingeniously come up with a very brilliant uh, ministry which is Ministry of so-called Intergovernmental and Lifting LG Funds Affairs. No, I just added that clause. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they conveniently did that and then ensure that the funds are kept in the intergovernmental uh, affairs. Then they disburse what they feel like. Governors are not as rich as they're supposed to be. As regards policing, we must be honest. Any governor that opens his mouth to discuss restructuring is one of the enemies of democracy. And here is why. Mm. If you haven't provided autonomy, and even after the presidential, the presidential executive, executive order, order 10 yeah. of 2020, which instructs the autonomy to the judicial and the legislature, and governments are not uh, governors are not following, which restructuring are you talking about? Exactly. You want it from the federal. So, I do not me. support, let me finish. Okay. I do not support a state police with the present powers Structure. conferred Thank on you. the state governor. Thank you as it is so let's be careful with the arsenal uh, example <laughs> and this we're, we're, no, we're tilting now there. because we don't clean. hate football because arsenal no 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 up. i'm always so let's be careful no, 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 because no. some governors are messing up you do no 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 i'm not which because one, of some which? governors no yeah. i'm being honest okay with the powers conferred mm -hmm. on governors mm -hmm. by the constitution mm -hmm. if you hand them a state police number one nobody will be able to suck in that state number two Nobody will be able to run against them. There will be no opposition mm -hmm. because they have kidnapped the legislature, the, the uh, LG, Judiciary? and yes. you so now want to solution? give them what's enforcement. Simple, create local police. 
Okay. Police should be restructuring. So, so in writing yes. a new con constitution, what we are saying is it can be local. It was stated yes, there. Yes. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't be, state. be state. It should be Why local. Should it be state? And, and you know, one other thing I think we should consider when it comes to policing is this. The reason they give for policing is that, okay, we want to have control. The federal government is controlling everything. Mm -hmm. But this is what they forget. If you have state police and you still have a bad federal government, the federal police still has more power than your state police. So it can come into your states oh, yes, and people. take over. Because what you're saying now is abusing the system. Because what is happening now, what they claim is happening, that the federal uh, controls everything, is an abuse if that is what is happening. Mm -hmm. So if you're running away from abuse, you don't create another avenue for even bigger abuse. True. The Constitution will be clear on what to do in such a situation and then no. we'll enforce it. Well, so many things are written in our Constitution that we're not enforcing right now. Mm. For example, local so, government autonomy, judiciary and all which, that. Which are already provided in for the in the Constitution. The Constitution. Constitution you know, yes. the major problem of the Constitution in Nigeria it's is that it is not even implemented to 40%. Yeah, exactly. That's where the major problem that's is. It. And that's why a lot of people are scary to talk about a new Constitution. Mm. Because if we have a new Constitution, then with the improved... Senate that we have with the tenth assembly, the ninth assembly is the most brilliant assembly as I've ever seen. Mm. Of course, I'm speaking such a but but you know, if you have that caliber of okay, people in the yeah. house, in the federal house, with a new constitution, we are doomed. I'm being honest, and I can assure you, 50 percent of them do not even know Nigeria's constitution. That's true. That in itself, I agree. 100%. So the, I think one of the key things in trying to get a new constitution will be, as Nigeria is trying to get a new constitution, we also should try and get at least 40, 48 senators into the House mm -hmm. and like 160 House of Rep into the Houses mm -hmm. so that we know that while we are creating a new constitution, it's with a new it's crop, with of, a minds. New crop of minds mm -hmm. that actually know what they are doing. Yeah. And now this should not be, um, ah, this person stood during NSARS. Ah, the person will probably make a good legislator. No, no the person will not make a good true. legislator. That is a big mistake. May not. May not. May not. Obviously, Tested. in times, in my political experience, 70% of the time will not make a good... They will go to the Electoral <laughs> College as well. We would ensure that ensure. happens. Okay. So Which keep is going. Okay. Keep going. Okay. Okay. We'll so them that. Let's so be we, careful. We are solution providers here. We can't just be talking about yeah, the problems. Yeah, yeah, we are yeah, also yeah, provide, yeah. preferring solutions. Yeah, so if we pick someone who is able to speak. We just say, go through the process to learn, like you no, said, no, no, you don't yeah. become a doctor. So we teach you, we teach you what yeah. you do course, so that, that you can solve. add it to all the other charisma yeah, that, 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 that you that have. Solve it. Yes. But you know, I think what will also help solving it best mm -hmm. is that when we finish teaching those who are aspiring for office, we also teach the constituents what to expect from them. That's the that is key. Because, and that is what we need before we can introduce a new constitution. Because, you see, I always say, I believe that a lot of people that are vying for the seat of the president, I'm sorry, let me just say the Feladro to the We OBS can do without calling names, and, yes. Okay. All, I mean, these are people I respect. <laughs> yes. I mean, in terms of their success rate mm. and all that. I believe rather than go to the presidency, we need to get them into the, the, the National Assembly. Because if we get a lot more of them into the National Assembly, it will be easier to then speak with the president. Our conversations here will never be complete, and they will not be complete without you. At The Positive Professional says, way to go, Joyce. You're such a confident, positive inspiration. Keep impacting and imparting positively. Thank you so much. Do well to follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag TheAdvocateNG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag TheAdvocateNG. To catch up on previous broadcasts, go to PlusTVAfrica.com forward slash the Advocate NG. Coyote is next after this break. Don't go anywhere. How do you decide who the victim is? Every day, Nigerians complain about the bias structure and siting of infrastructure in cities across Nigeria. We're obviously peeved by these biases, and humanly so. We respond or react in different ways as an expression of our dissatisfaction and blatant abuse by powers we have decided to call unknown. In Baba Fela's words, unknown soldiers. We've been the victim for so long that we've slipped into the comfortable posture of constantly playing the victim, even when we're not. But the question is, who really is the victim? How do we choose who a victim is? And what are the rights of a victim? The nurses are harsh on their patients because they, the nurses, are victims. 
poor emoluments, inadequate tools, uncomfortable environments, ETC, the list goes on. And the patients complain. These same patients that complain might be a teacher or a lecturer. He or she equally passes the frustration onto the pupils, students, or even the parents. In effect, produces unqualified bunch of unprofessional professionals for our dear nation, Nigeria. In October 2020, the nation witnessed one of the most coordinated uprising against oppression in recent times, NSAS. Police brutality must stop. Again, we are the victims. But then I ask, who really is the victim? The policeman who is being pilfered by the teacher who is playing victim. Or is it the policeman who has become accustomed to drinking the local herbs, Agbo, claiming he's a lover of tradition, when in reality it is because he cannot afford to go to the hospital? Is it the policeman that has bought fake drugs and has lost a child? Is it the policeman that is poorly trained, lowly remunerated, dehumanized, and is giving all he knows to the job? No matter how inadequate this is to the society. Rather than praise our military, we bastardize them and constantly talk about how poorly they are performing, when the truth is that they might be operating on the blind side. I mean, we've heard a lot of stories about them. Our failure to celebrate all the gallant soldiers who lost their lives at the battlefront yesterday will definitely produce self-minded soldiers who will not give their best to protect the nation tomorrow. Yet another victim. In the 90s, Igbos were tagged with 419. Rather than tackle the menace, we tribalized it. Now Nigeria is seen as a country that celebrates 419 kind of smartness. Nigeria played the victim and threw a tribe under the bus to save face. We're currently plagued by a different kind of terrorism. Again, we're playing victim. We've tribalized it, Fulani headsmen, and accept the terror. We expect the terror to go away. Rain, rain, go away. Come and rain another day, like that nursery rhyme. The victim cycle never ends, and that is our problem as Nigerians. Every Nigerian needs to know that he or she is not a victim is not, rather, more a victim than the other. It's high time we started seeing ourselves collectively as victims because that is the only way we can get a solution to our problems. Let's analyze it properly. A teacher fails to give his or her, his or her best in class. He organizes extra classes to make more money. Her tool is the pen. He or she is the victim. A doctor fails to turn up at the public hospital and redirects you to the private hospital just so that he or she can make more money. In the process, the private hospital, or the public hospital rather, becomes a slaughterhouse. He or she is a victim, so they have to react. The bus conductor hikes the transport fare at will, depending on his mood. He can decide to blame bad roads or any other thing. All these people use their tools to make an extra living. Why? Because they are victims. What are the tools of the policeman? What are the tools of the soldier? What are the tools of the civil servant? After all, we're all victims. I'm not a victim in Jesus' name. <laughs> I find every spirit of victimism. <laughs> I know. You know, Kadi, I, I, really, I really loved, I lo I loved, I loved listening to you. It was really, really impressive. Because it came from a Nigerian angle, which is kind of rare to see these days. We've, I agree that of all tribes in Nigeria, which are more than 200, two ethnic, ethnicities in Nigeria, which are more than 250, every one of them is marginalized. Exactly. And that is what we do not understand in this country. Our bean is always to pick on who we think because we do not understand his culture. We feel this is, this is negative, this is right, this is this. And for the purpose of this conversation, I would like to bring something up. I was opportune to see something years ago. And if Nigeria had dealt with this years ago, we would not be in this problem. Mm. So there was strife in, of course, um, sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. And it was reported to Nigeria that, you know, the executive in Abuja should take action mm. because our borders were porous. And these were people who carried guns. And also, they noticed a, a deforestation yes, of okay. Zamporno, Zamfara, Katsina, Yobi, 
which are all today flashpoints. This, this report was more than 10 years ago. Nothing was done about it. Our borders have been left porous. And most of us, because of political affiliations, have invited people from outside the country who are not Nigerians to come into the country and perpetrate havoc. Mm -hmm. This goes down to even, there is nobody not guilty of this. This goes down to even within the Ife Modakeke crisis, mm -hmm. which people were hired from outside Nigeria to fight these wars across each other. Mm -hmm. The Jukun, Tiv, yeah. they did the same thing. We are all guilty of this manner of approach. The average Nigerian doesn't like strife. We love Wambe too much now. Okay. If you want to see a country that has problem, I'll give you an example. When India and Pakistan were together, there was no intermarriage. Mm. No, they made movies about it. There was no intermarriage. Mm. Nigeria, we still intermarry. The only things we don't agree mm. with are when it comes to politics. Uh, politics. And the truth is actually resources that we do not lay our hands on. Nigeria mm. is too rich to be a poor country. Yes. And we have refused to handle that. And because of that, we have sold out our nationhood. Mm. Most of us do not think Nigeria is, is, is an identity. We all look at ourselves as Yoruba, Igbo, yeah. Hausa, yeah. Tiv, mm -hmm. Ibibio, and, and whatever, which is wrong in real context. Mm. A, a, niche, a country is a territorial boundary. A nation has a unified direction and ideology to which it seems. I'm one of the proponents saying we should try something. I'm not saying exactly this, but we could like make our national lingua pidgin English. It might unify us more than we already are. Mm. That's my take on things. I, I do agree that Pidgin English, English should be not, not Queen's English. Not, yeah. Yes, yeah. I agree. And I also agree that if we take out, just from what Kunle is saying, take out that state of origin. Mm. And become state of residence. And state of residence, that's fine. That's that unifies us. So yeah. we all are in a geographical location. We are all from here yeah. because we live here. That's it. Being victims means we should be more empathetic toward each other, show some more compassion and respect mm. for each other mm -hmm. because we're all victims of one okay. thing or, or the, the other. other, whether planned or, or unplanned. Not. The mm. thing is, many times when we think of ourselves as victims, we, we think someone somewhere is sitting and trying to victimize us. It. It's not always so. Mm -hmm. It's just that... It's indirect, many, in fact, more times than not. Yeah, Someone yeah. is just trying to protect themselves, like the doctor who wants private practice for more money. For more money. He's not trying to become, create a slaughterhouse. Yes. He or she is just trying to protect their family. Mm. So it's a cycle of us hurting each other indirectly, and yeah. yes, sometimes directly. So compassion and solution drive. What mm. do we do? do yeah. You know, like, like you rightly said, compassion. A lot of us have lost what you said. We've lost that love of nation mm. or even love of self, I dare say. Love of people. Yeah. It, it, mo it, I dare say more than 70% of Nigerians, if, they, if we were to give them an opportunity today to choose another country, they will gladly, gladly. I, I was on radio in Ghana. Many Sometime also because year. they don't know better about of the course. other countries. Yes. yes, and that's what we're talking about. So they've seen themselves that we are at the receiving end. We mm. don't know blah, blah, blah. And they, you know, I was on radio in Ghana when the NSAS thing came on. And I'm an advocate for Nigeria wherever I am. Mm. And the guys, the presenter made a mistake and asked me a question. So how does it feel to hear people talking about your country in this manner? And it was one of the leading radio stations in Ghana. I was very excited when he asked the question because it was an opportunity for me to lash at them. <laughs> so I made, yeah, I, I made them know it's that, not that, the people. That's very nice. You know what I mean? Right? <laughs> so that it's not the people's fault. You know, because at the end of the day, so many great things have happened in Nigeria this year. Mm -hmm. You haven't reported it this way you're reporting this NSAS thing. Yes. You the don't even have the fact. Exactly. So you, whatever you give to the people is the song they'll sing. Any music you play to them. And the guy kept quiet. But while I was busy defending Nigeria, of course, I said it was a bad thing that happened, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have happened and all that. While I was busy saving the face of Nigeria, a guy called, not just one, a lot of them, but one that stood out for me, insulted me on air and told me that I'm one of the problems of Nigeria and with the government and that he was even <laughs> until the end such thing happened. It was about changing his nationality mm -hmm. to a Somalian. Okay. They would prefer to be a Somalian than to be a Nigerian. Good luck to him. And the presenter was looking at me like this. Mm. You say your country, blah, blah, blah. And you see, that's the challenge we have, that 
we see... He was a victim. He was a victim. Yes. And he's pouring it out on everybody. On everyone. And you see, we, we, we see Nigeria as a place where I have an option. I could check out. I could go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I don't owe anything to this country. Listen, things happen in Ghana, in Togo, in Burkina Faso. I can talk about countries in West Africa that are equally terrible. Under this, during this COVID, there was a government in a West African country that told the people who were spending about $250,000 daily feeding people. Mm. And they said, the people said, okay, bring us the proof. And they showed people in like two or three parks scampering for food. Mm. And like, so are these people, can you feed these people with $250,000 in a day? People still. But you know what? While you're busy insulting them, or they're busy fighting their government, mm. you, a foreigner, attempt to insult their president. And you will be reminded that you are Ghanaian, uh, that you are Nigerian. You're not allowed to do that. It's our joke. It's our joke, exactly. <laughs> so to, we don't to see take that. ownership to mm -hmm. us, especially us here as parents, yeah. it starts with us at home. True. I hear parents say things like, "Hey, don't sh don't teach your neighbor your neighbor what you know, because they will take what you know and add it to what they know, and then they and become they better, better than, than you. you." That is institutionalizing <laughs> division that and victim it. mentality. Mm -hmm. So. If we will start by teaching our children to say, everyone is your sister, is your brother. Allow somebody else step in before you. doesn't take anything away from you. Teach that person what they don't know. It doesn't take anything mm -hmm. away from you. In fact, it reinforces your you knowledge. Exactly. I found it weird when I, I asked the teacher to allow my son teach his classmates more in primary four. And some other parents were like, why are you doing that? You mm -hmm. want them to not be better than your son? And I go, no, 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 no. We win better when we are all winning. That's I'll, I'll, I'll give you a life example. Yes. People normally assume that with my experience and of course political parties and running for office that I actually know politics a lot, lot well. Because I get to be part of the training and teaching of students within the Electoral College, I can tell you that my growth within the last one year in politics is exponential. Yes. Things I, because I keep... Because when you teach, yeah, you become better. I teach, I become yes. better. Yes. I become far better than you I actually was. Better. And I don't know why we don't understand that. And there's one key thing we need to understand in Nigeria. I think one of the things that... Bought, two things that bother us are tribe I and would religion. Pick, I would put something... In fact, you know what? Let me just make this point here. When in church, and I say this with all sense of responsibility, mm. the leader says... Tell your neighbor, I don't care what you came for, I came to be blessed. That in itself is already causing a divide. You were about to say religion and. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if in the religious house, I am saying to you, Coyote, I don't care what you came for. I'm saying to you, mm -hmm. Kule, don't friend. touch me. Oh. Me, I came here for my own blessing. We're already saying we don't care mm -hmm. for each other. Mm -hmm. In the same place where we're supposed to be saying, look, I came here for your blessing and mine. So how do we walk out of that place? Which is adding to what you were saying. Please go ahead. Uh, so um, I feel, um, like for me, I, I consider myself a little bit privileged in Nigeria. I was, I, I, my dad Muslim, my mom Catholic. So I was raised with both religions. And unlike other people, I finished both holy books and I had a choice. So today, most people cannot tell my religion. Uh, we can't. Most people need people, to know. You, that's the thing. It's a need to know basis. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that even on social media, just because somebody sees the name and sometimes, you know, I get to interact and somebody sees the name, Lawa, Lawa. which is my son's name, they will tilt towards me not because of the points they think I'm making, but I can almost tell the from the name where, yeah. averagely from the name, where you tilt on a mm -hmm. debate based on you would rather associate with okay. this or associate yes, with yeah. that. I keep saying this. Our institutions need to become actual institutions. Our institutions need to become actual institutions. Well, yeah. our institutions need to change everything. We need to move on. We need to stop being victims. We need a constitutional referendum. We need so many things. But as we all know, time is never on our side. Uh, he's never a friend on this program as well. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms. On Facebook, join us on Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plus TV Africa.com forward slash the advocate NG. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station. Remember that the important conversations are among the necessary tools for a saner society. Bye for now. 
Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.